Farming games absolutely suck. I've been seeing a lot of attacks on farming games, with fans of the genre accusing them of lagging innovation, being repetitive, and overall boring. While there is some truth behind all of this, I believe such assumptions are discrediting the amazing titles that have released recently. Do farming games actually suck? Let's talk about it, and I have four Fey Farm keys thanks to Phoenix Labs to give away to four of you. If you want to win, all you have to do is stick around till the end to learn how to enter the giveaway. Hello you gorgeous human being, it's Miss Bubbles. If you love farming games and RPGs, you're in the bubbliest corner on YouTube, so consider squishing the subscribe button. Before we get to the point where we're at now, let's brush on where farming games started and we can trace it back to Harvest Moon in 1996, which was also known as Farm Story in Japan. It was released for the SNES and developed by MCUS, then localized in North America by Natsume, while Marvelous handled publishing in Japan and the PAL regions. There were a few more farming games that released before it, but nothing was as groundbreaking as Harvest Moon was. From there, we got the Game Boy version, then Harvest Moon back to nature in 1999 and many more as the years passed by. We also saw the first Rune Factory game, a celebration of the 10th anniversary of the Harvest Moon franchise and the first spin-off for the series. Fast forward to 2014, after the release of Harvest Moon 3D A New Beginning on the 3DS, Marvelous announced that Xseed will be handling the localization of their new series under the title Story of Seasons, so they parted ways with Natsume. Natsume kept making games under the Harvest Moon name, while Marvelous would would make new games under Story of Seasons. Now we're not gonna get into why this divide happened, there are plenty of very good videos on YouTube that you can watch to learn more about that, but I want us to jump to 2016, where something major happened. This was the year that Stardew Valley came out. It was developed by one person, Concerned Ape, and in four and a half years, he managed to create a farming game inspired by Story of Seasons, which also addressed many of the shortcomings that he saw in the franchise. And from there on, we saw many developers try to replicate the success of Story of Seasons, Harvest Moon, and Stardew Valley with their own twists and turns. We received Yonder, the Cloud Catcher Chronicles, and its take on a lighter farming sim, while adding an open world adventure experience to the mix. We had Graveyard Keeper, which in my opinion to this day is one of the most innovative farming sims where you have a graveyard to look after with the added farming elements. We also got My Time at Porsche, which despite many of its flaws, mainly ones that had to do with the bugs and the performance issues as well as the very very bad Nintendo Switch port, is one of my absolute 10 out of 10 farming games until My Time at Sandra came along and took its place. Around that same time, we also saw the development of Garden Paws and Kinseed. Garden Paws had you play as a cute animal running your shop in an open world setting, while Kinseed brought RPG mechanics into the mix as you run a shop and look after generations to come and continue your legacy. However, something that you might not know about Kinseed is the fact that it was stuck in development hell for a really long time, and for a really long time, the fans of this game actually thought that the developer has abandoned it until we got the full release. We also saw many non-farming games start adopting farming mechanics to appeal to this fanbase. So Animal Crossing New Horizons added farming in its 2.0 update. Sims 4 added Cottage Living DLC where you now have chickens and cows on your lot. Or even recently, we had Eastward release Octopia DLC, which is basically a farming edition that sets itself apart from the rest of the game. With all of these games in mind, we can agree that Stardew Valley initiated the rise of farming games, be it as a standalone game or cozy games adding farming as a feature into the gameplay loop. But let's stop there for a second and let's circle back to the initial question. Do farming games suck? To answer that, we're gonna have to trace back the downhill of farming games and how the sentiment became farming games suck. Let's start with Brookhaven Grimoire, one of the first games that I saw taking a massive inspiration from Stardew Valley, but failed to capture the majority of farming games lovers. It was one of the many disappointments that I had to talk about on the channel and made me so sad to see. It lacked the love that I saw in the games I mentioned before and felt like a lifeless farming sim that didn't have much to offer. Speaking of Stardew Valley inspiration, we recently heard of Sunkist. I don't know about you, but it looks a lot like Stardew Valley. 
valley with crops, NPCs, trees, machines, etc. looking exactly the same as Stardew Valley. However, I heard that if you mention that to the developer, they will quickly block you, which is childish to me and worries me of how different will this one be anyways. Also to clarify, the developer behind it worked on Stardew Valley with Concerned Ape and said so openly on their Twitter account, and we've been told that Concerned Ape actually gave this developer the rights to use the graphics of Stardew Valley. But I just don't get the need to block people if they mention that your game looks literally exactly like Stardew Valley, but we're gonna see how this one unfolds. I also want to mention Ooblets. While it has been a success now, its development wasn't that bubbly. It was taken down from Steam and became an Epic Game Store exclusive, which made people who supported its development on Kickstarter for a Steam version not so happy. But the biggest problem was how the developer handled this, with them responding to the criticism in, let's just say, a not so bubbly way. There are plenty of screenshots online showcasing the interactions between the community and the developer, and while I can see the sentiment of both why the community is upset and why the developer was upset, I still believe that the developer should be professional when they are interacting with the consumers. But I would love to know what you thought about this whole drama that unfolded a few years back. And the worst story is Dreamland Village Life, which had its own Kickstarter page, only to find out that the entire company was a scam and the likelihood of the money used on Kickstarter to support it would have never seen the light of day. After that, we saw a copycat Kickstarter page where Josh from Josh's Gaming Garden showcased how the Ranchers page looked exactly like that of Coral Island. The bottom line of these examples is that farming games started to be used as either a cash grab, a scam, copy paste rather than drawing inspiration or at times showcasing the unprofessionalism of these farming game developers, which is something that we've been seeing in a lot of genres. But again, we can say that from the beginning of the success of Stardew Valley, we also started to see this very negative connotation behind farming games and a lot of farming game lovers just being upset about what is happening and saying like, you know what, farming games actually suck now. From there on, we've also been seeing attacks on the new Story of Seasons games from Marvelous and Exceed, where pioneers of all of town released with very dull festivals, annoying makers that cluttered the hell out of your farm, and dialogue that made the community feel dead. It is fixed now, but when it initially released, it was just really boring to play. After that, we saw Exceed and Marvelous push remakes with A Wonderful Life and Friends of Mineral Town. I played A Wonderful Life and cannot see its appeal to the modern game farming lover because it lacks the quality of life features we've grown used to, and I saw pitchforks in my review about it where I said I was disappointed by it, and I feel like that was uncalled for, and pretty much the pitchforks were risen by the fanbase who was pretty nostalgic to it, and doesn't understand that this one just lacks the amazing features that we have in modern farming games. When you look at what a wonderful has to offer you, it really is lacking with a community that feels like a cabbage, boring dialogue, barely any activities to engage in, and repetitive gameplay that grows tedious very quickly. Rune Factory 5 was also released, which is, to me, a 10 out of 10 farming game, but I know many people did not enjoy it, especially massive fans of the fourth entry and the ones before it. So the sentiment became that Exceed and Marvelous are starting to lack the innovation that they had before, and people started to lose hope in the games that they're making. Now we're waiting on four upcoming Story of Seasons and Rune Factory games, so let's hope that things get better from here. On the other hand, we had Natsume trying to make a comeback with two terrible games that seemed like nothing but a cash grab while using the name of Harvest Moon. We got One World and Light of Hope. The controls on both games were extremely clunky and unintuitive, bugs were crippling them, the characters were shallow, they lacked quality of life features, and overall seemed like poor 
ports of bad mobile games. With these gaming experience, I want to address Fae Farm, which we're giving away today, and I saw a lot of hate targeted at the game from people who didn't even play it, and it felt like an echo chamber knocking the game's price. However, the same gamers were okay paying the same price for the other games that I listed earlier, even though many of these games were a complete disappointment. Fae Farm is fun, and it uses the gameplay loop of farming along with other activity progression to keep you interested in playing more. Yes, the characters are not the best, they feel dull, but the gameplay is solid with critter catching, crafting, tending to barn animals, fishing, and more. So I don't get why Fae Farm is getting attacked, but a game like Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life is paid around £40 for when it has nothing to offer in the modern farming games era. And I cannot make this video without mentioning how terrible farming game ports on the Nintendo Switch have been. Like, it has been abysmal to say the least. Even my favorite games, My Time at Sandrock and My Time at Portia, run terribly. It's a complete embarrassment to release a game like this on the Switch. Everdream Valley was a mess of bugs as well. And whoever wants to say that these games run really well on the Nintendo Switch, I really think that you're lying to yourself at this point. Like, me saying a port runs bad on a specific console does not mean that I don't like the game. I freaking love these games. But we have to be honest and say the pop-in, the, just the way that the games perform on there is terrible. In this light, I want to highlight two more things. The first is that we have so many new farming games that seem to have been in development for a long time, even with successful Kickstarters, and it makes me wonder, when are they releasing? And the second is that we've seen farming games go into early access and be stuck there, which also makes me worried about them getting abandoned or just taking forever to be fully released. Now we've talked about a lot of games that make you say, damn it, like farming games just actually suck. But the thing is, again, we're discrediting the really good ones that we have been seeing recently. Of course, when you see many games in the same genre disappointing you, it makes you want to give up on it after all. However, when I look back at my channel and look at the many lists that I've made about the best farming games out there, it is a testament to how many epic ones we've had. I'm gonna leave a link for you in the pinned comment so you can watch some of those, and I promise you, you're gonna find a few picks that will be amazing to try. And these ones are epic farming experiences that implement amazing gameplay progression, fun quality of life additions, and even in-depth stories. Wildflowers is a full-blown story, fully voice acted, and will leave you in tears through a 40-hour journey. My Time at Sandrock is an epic adventure with RPG mechanics that will last you 60 plus hours with character development, skill progression, and overall fun story. Sunhaven is an amazing farming game with RPG elements that emphasizes crafting and magic, giving you an entertaining story to explore and lots to do on the farm with your friends. There's also Medieval Dynasty, a farming game that lets you build a farm and progress it from generation to generation while you maintain a respectable reputation. It's one of the most immersive and complex farming sims I ever had to experience. And we can't forget about Dincom, which was developed by one person and took a mix of Minecraft and Animal Crossing, then placed its gameplay in an Australian outback and is absolutely fun to play alone or with friends. Or how about my absolute favorite at the moment, freaking Coral Island. It takes real life problems like the damage we are causing to our environment, so the developers applied that to the game's coral reef and then it lets you enjoy a wide range of activities from mining to crafting, bug catching, diving, collecting, foraging, meeting fascinating characters including merfolk and more. While some say it's incomplete because it still has a 2024 roadmap, to me it just makes me feel excited excited to know that I can play the game at my own pace and have new content to look forward to in 2024. Should the whole game been available with the 1.0 release? Yes. Does that mean this game was abandoned and not a great one? Not at all. And this is where I came to realize that the whole farming game suck is not true, and it's discrediting the amazing work that many developers are putting into this genre. Yes, we've had our fair share of disappointments recently, but we also should give credit where it's due. If you want to win one of the four Steam keys for Fae Farm, all you have to do is share your thoughts in the comment section and let me know that you're interested in winning a key. And before I let you go, here are 20 of the best farming games that I believe you should try, especially if you feel in a rut with this genre and don't know what to play next. Thank you to my YouTube and Patreon bubblies for making videos like this possible. Thank you for watching. And a shout out goes to The Game Dimension, Jacob, Stephanie, Steven, and Jake Logan for going the extra mile. Until next time, stay bubbly.